Hey, BookTube. I am exhausted. I'm really tired right now. Um, but um, today is the wrap-up. And guess who else is going to be doing a wrap-up video? Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so to wrap things up, we had March Mystery Madness this month. We had March Mystery Madness this month and other stuff. We had March Mystery Madness. We had prompts. I was a host. And it was my birthday, and I got a bunch of awesome books that I couldn't really read because there were a bunch of other books that I was supposed to read. So, um, let's get into, I guess, those first. For my March Mystery Madness prompts, for single, I had Rafferty by Bill S. Ballinger. Um... It was interesting, but I didn't love it, and the end made me want to burn it. Uh, number, I did Five Little Pigs uh, by Agatha Christie, which was surprisingly a lot of fun, but the middle of the book was just letters from five different people describing the events that happened that day, and that... Um, almost killed me but the beginning of the book was great and, and the end of the book was great okay so single number person so mourn the hangman by harry whittington um excellent loved it single number person place in a lonely place by dorothy b hughes um for once not for once but this rarely happens with me. Um, the movie, I think, is better than the book. So if you ever come across the Humphrey Bogart vehicle, it's amazing. Um, the book, not so much. It was okay. I just didn't love it. Time, weather, something in space. Oh, man. So for uh, time, I did One Deadly Dawn by um, Harry Whittington. And this was good, but it wasn't his best work. Um, his good work is still better than almost everyone's best work. But um, it wasn't his best, but it was good. Weather, I did Death in the Clouds by Agatha Christie. I loved it. I don't care what toxin works like what damn it, I loved it. It was super fun. And, um, finally after, um, <laughs> after I did all, I read it and I did my videos on it, um, Scott actually sent me the pictures of the, um, seating arrangement and who was sitting where. And, um, I'm probably going to like blow that up and like frame it or something like that because it was so ridiculous the whole time I'm reading this book trying to figure out how these seats work and I just couldn't I don't know what was wrong with me like I've, I've done like trains in my head I've done all sorts of stuff and I could totally always do it for some reason this airplane was like the hedge maze in The Shining. Like, it just was not making any sense to me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But there were nine. What was the other effing prompt? Was there another F? Oh, color. Um, I did uh, the mystery on the blue train, or of the blue train. I think it's on the blue train. Um, that was another Poirot. It was good. Um, wasn't the best, but it was good. Um, then for space, I did The Girl from Outer Space by Carter Brown. You saw the video of that, maybe. Um, that was just an awesome, fun Carter Brown book. Everyone should read Carter Brown. It's just fun, it, and it's quick. Like, 
it's just it's like brain candy and then the bonus um the book i picked strictly for the title was strip for violence by ed lacy and this was so good most of the time and then it kind of wasn't so um there's that so i don't know if i said this but i read 23 books um in march and um how many of these one two three four five six seven so out of those books seven of the books i read ragatha christie and i do this a lot where i get on kicks and i'll read like a ton of books by one person so again i did five little pigs death in the clouds sad cypress it was kind of um, I think it was Janelle who pointed it out to me that this one was a little more of a romance. It had more of a romance to it than um, anything else. It was just, it was a little strange. It was probably my least favorite out of the ones I read. Um, out of the Agatha Christie's anyway. Um, Appointment with Death. Um, was awesome. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Murder on the Links, um, the second Poirot book, it was pretty good. Um, and then the second Miss Marple book, The Body in the Library, which um, I think is very convoluted, and I um, didn't like it a whole lot at the time, but I, it's growing on me. Miss Marple is um, quite... Um, the fun, the funion. Um, I read some Thomas Ligotti, which was awesome. And I need to do a follow-up video on that, um, just to clarify some stuff. But, um, I read his short story collection, um, Teatro Grotesco, which was fantastic. Um, and his, um, nonfiction philosophy work, called The Conspiracy Against the Human Race, which the more I think about it, the more I love it. Um, and I'm reading it again. Um, and this might be one of those books that you read many times. I read this. It's kind of a book, but it's kind of a magazine. Um, Paperback Fanatic, issue 43. Um... I got dish for my birthday. Um, this has a, it's the gold medal book special and it has a bunch of stuff on Gil Brewer and Dan Marlowe and Charles Williams and John McDonald and Robert McGinnis and a bunch of reviews. Um, maybe I should do a video on this cause there, this thing's full of awesome pictures and stuff in it. Um, so I'll, I'll just talk about that later. I read a couple, um, short story collections um that were quite short so i read the ebony frame by um is it edith nisbet um and this was very cool like it was kind of weird and kind of steamy for what it was i thought um but it was pretty cool um and in the penal colony by kafka and, um, the weird thing about that is, is that I could have sworn I read that before, but as I was reading it, like none of it sounded familiar to me. So I'm going to have to, when we get all of our books, um, out of storage, I'm going to have to go through and see like <laughs> what collection I have. Cause I could have sworn I read that now, um, I also, and I think I talked about this in my last wrap-up, because I started listening to these at the end of last month, and um, I actually might have finished a couple of these, but I didn't put them into stupid good reads in time. But um, great classic ghost stories and great classic horror stories, they're included on Audible. So I just grabbed them and were listening to them, and it was amazing. Um, and also casting the runes, but I finished, um, can such things be, 
which is a collection of Ambrose beers. And, like, I kind of want to do, like, a... I don't know. I kind of want to do something about Ambrose Spears because, like, when he hits, it is like, um, it's it just knocks you out. But then there's some other stories of his that are like kind of so so, and other ones that they just kind of fall flat for me. And I know that whenever you're dealing with a collection of short stories. Some are going to be better than others. But this one really felt like it picked up towards the end. Like, the stories were getting, like, better and better and better. And, like, from a lot of collections I read, you usually pack the beginning with all the good stuff, and then they kind of uh, get a little worse as you go. But this one was just, like... The stories in the beginning were okay. Like, the, none of them are bad. But it's just, when you have something really good, it, like, it kind of, like, kicks you in the teeth a little bit. But I would like to do something where um, I talk about him. Because he has stuff that's, like, obviously, like, horror and then he has stuff that's, like, based on his time in the military. And then he has this other stuff that I think, honestly, at the time of the writing of it, was supposed to be humorous. But to me, those are the most horrific stories um, that he writes like, the things that happen, the things we're supposed to take for um, commonplace in his stories are completely bizarre. And um, it's very deadpan, glossed over. And I'm sure in the day that they were written, like, people would go, <laughs> listen to this, this is madness. <laughs> I'm reading it and I'm going... And I'm like, I'm like on a completely different, I don't know, like, you know, people say sometimes that like books like lose their impact as time goes on because either so many people have aped a trope or, um, something's been done so many times that it doesn't have the same impact like, I feel like some of these things that people thought were funny back in the day are, like, just terrifying now. So, um, I might do something. I don't know what I'm going to do yet about beers, but I really would like to have some kind of... Some kind of discussion or something like that to try to, I don't know, like, I feel like there's so much to talk about with him, and, um, and then just, like, how he died, like, he just, he wanted to go look at the Spanish-American War, or whatever, and just walked off into the desert, no one ever saw him again, like, what the, like, like, I don't know, like, I'm just, like, as you can see, I'm stumbling all over my words, but I'm just thinking about some of his writing, and, um, I don't know, this, this is a wrap-up, this isn't a discussion, so I will shut my face now. Oh, and I also read, um, I, I did a reread of this during a buddy read, with Booklectic, uh, you get so alone at times that it just makes sense by Charles Bukowski. Because um, tomorrow, um, being April and being National Poetry Month, um, we're going to be doing um, a group read of 
Love is a Dog from Hell by Charles Bukowski. And um, on Weird Mask, we're going to be showcasing um, some of my favorite Edgar Allan Poe poetry um, on there every day through the month. So um, lots of fun stuff. So let me know, did you guys finish March Mystery Madness? How many prompts did you get to? Um, it was just a pretty decent reading month. Um, but I'm wondering if it was because I was told what to read. I don't know if that has any bearing on it, but we will see. So, um, 